Welcome back to the Student Hub Live STEM Showcase. In this section, we talk about computing and communications. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about pythons, turtles, and raspberry pies, which you can see on our table here. And I'm joined by Paul Puick, um, who is going to be telling us all about um, programming and Python language, um, which is an important part of TM112, Introduction to Computing and IT2. Yes, that's right. So uh, in TM112, Introduction to Computing and IT2, um, one of the things we want to help the students uh, uh, work with is uh, the Python programming language. That's actually the first uh, text-based programming language they encounter in their computing and IT degree studies. Um, but it's actually f uh, sort of framed within a broader context of problem solving. Um, and uh, within that context, we look at various rules of thumb, heuristics, uh, to solve uh, a range of problems. Um, and one of those is um, to take a problem and really decompose it or take it apart into simpler, easier to solve problems and to go from there. And we've got a number of, uh, of examples throughout uh, the module uh, of that. Excellent. Um, now, you've devised a very interesting problem. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so what we're going to have a look at later is uh, the turtle uh, challenge. So this is actually um, what we do at the very beginning of TM112, uh, where we basically we use um, a, a visual uh, feedback uh, to actually help the student to understand what the computer program is actually doing. So you will see it, something directly happening on the screen when you give the computer a particular command. Um, so that could be something like forward or left or right, but yeah, we'll see a bit more of that uh, in a minute. Excellent. Now at home, you'll be able to see um, on our interactive voting tools um, a couple of different options. Uh, which way should the turtle go? Uh, and you'll have options for forward, left or right. Um, and you can also write your answers in the chat to that. Um, so hopefully we'll try and get uh, the turtle to go in the direction we want it to as well. And we have Kit on the uh, hot desk as well. Kit, hello. How's everyone at home? Hi, yeah, they're uh, having a good time. We've got lots of queries about uh, STEM BSC, which is uh, which we're we're chatting about. Um, but I'm, I think they're looking forward to the turtle challenge. Brilliant. Okay, excellent. So, shall we start doing the turtle challenge, or shall we start talking about why Python programming is an important thing to look at? Uh, we, we can we can say a little bit more maybe about uh, Python first, because uh, the turtles challenge is a sort of very simple instance, which really um, I hope is for some people might be the first experience of seeing or interacting with real programming language. But so Python itself is important because it's, it's not just um, the reason we use it in, in TM Moment 2 is because it was developed for non-programmers. So scientists who use it, say um, a biologist who, want to, who wants to analyze a DNA sequence, or maybe a linguist who wants to collect lots of text and analyze that, um, but also in the, in the sort of commercial world. So uh, companies like YouTube, Instagram, so social media, it's actually Python running underneath of that. So it's one of the most widely used programming languages now, isn't it? That's right, yes. Yeah. And why is it important then that non-programmers are able to pick up a language and use it? Things like Instagram, Facebook that rely very heavily on quick changes, on being very agile and adaptive in a, in a very evolving world. Why is it important that they can access a language more easily? Um, so because, um, well, when you, when you are as a non-programmer, say from a particular discipline, a particular STEM discipline, you have a particular sub a problem to solve, um, nowadays, that often involves a huge data set and you want to work with that. And you're really interested in solving that problem. You're not necessarily interested in learning the programming language. So the programming language is really a means to get yeah. to the end. And so the faster the programming language can, can allow you to do that, the better, basically. Um, so is it about honing down the steps then in terms of the programming to make things more simple and less complex and therefore more robust? It's partly about that. I think what's, uh, what's sort of special about Python or what, what distinguishes it from other languages is um, but that's certainly my experience when I first started learning about it about 10 years ago, um, where, where I tried some other languages as well for a particular problem. It took me several days to get my head around it, those languages and it, it, it didn't really work. In that case, it was analyzing a, a huge amount of text, basically, a uh, set of dialogues, and I wanted to find out where the turns are, how long the turns are, and do some analysis on that. Um, Python, I, I then came across Python, and literally uh, within a day I had actually solved the problem I wanted to solve. Um, and it, it, it had more the feeling of telling the computer almost in English what I wanted it to do. So some of the things which I, I hadn't really sort of looked up yet in, the, in, say, the manual for the program, I just tried to tell, tell the computer, you know, 
that particular command, and it, it just it just did what I what I expected it to do. Whereas with other languages, often there is a lot of overhead in terms of the brackets, um, the spacing, uh, uh, the special keywords, uh, the, the whole sort of infrastructure which you really need to get around first, which is interesting for programmers and computer scientists, but for somebody who just wants to solve a problem, it's not really what it's about. Um, so, so what do you learn about then in, in um, TM112? Hmm. Um, because obviously you're teaching Python and you're teaching it, um, well you've mentioned that it's it's one of a set of languages and yes. so obviously it's not the only one because others are useful at some point. And That's you've mentioned right. why this is more useful for non-programmers to be yeah. able to do things quickly and easily. How, how do you sort of teach it then within that context? Um, so we we have, uh, so we build up to a, to a number of uh, projects which, uh, w with the idea that these projects use real-world data. So the two examples of that. So the first one, um, so there's the Office for National Statistics mm. uh, that makes lots of uh, data that it collects throughout the UK available on its, on its site. So one of the set of the statistics is on health and well-being, particularly on people's happiness in different regions of the UK. Yeah. And so we get our students to do some analysis of that then also actually look at some other, collect, connect that with another data set to see is it really true or is there a correlation between how long you live and how happy people are in a particular region, for instance. So students are using this found data to really develop a program to look at relationships between things. Yeah, so, so they, they, are, they are, on the one hand, they are learning the, uh, the problem-solving skills and a little bit of the Python. On the other hand, they're also learning a little bit about statistical concepts like correlation versus causation, for instance, so things which are not necessarily uh, related to the programming language itself, but which you can then, where, where you can use the, the concrete example as a nice vehicle to, to introduce those concepts as well. Now you mentioned that things like Instagram, Facebook, Google are using Python language. Why is it important in a race to sort of get better to, things uh, going to, on, better functionalities, yeah. etc. Why is that important and what have some, been some of those sort of key battles and who's won? Yes. So, so there is a really nice story there because, um, so, so, as you mean, so YouTube was uh, acquired a while ago by, um, by Google. So it's a Google company now, but uh, before that there was actually also something called Google Video, mm. which was um, in a few blocks uh, down the road where YouTube was uh, located as well. Google Video had about a hundred, uh, well, over a hundred people employed to build their uh, uh, video uh, application. Uh, YouTube was a fairly small outfit with about 20 people. Um, they were racing against each other because at that time, so the, the, the sort of um, uh, streaming of video was still very, very early on in the process. So all these new features sort of came or so one, one of them would introduce a feature maybe to like a video or to share it. The other one would then very quickly want to do the same thing and introduce that as well. Now uh, Google video was using uh, a more low level language, C++, um, with this huge number of developers. And typically if the other side introduced a, f a feature, it would take them a month or a couple of weeks to have that feature ready as well. And actually, YouTube um, managed to do the same thing in about a week or even under a week. Wow. Uh, with, with the difference really being that they were using this higher level scripting language in particular. In this case, that was Python, basically. Uh, and so they won in the end the race because, yeah, in the end, so what we've got now, some of you might be watching this on YouTube right now, actually. Brilliant. Okay, well, let's do the turtle challenge. This, right. this is it. And everyone at home needs to get ready now. And Kit, we're going to ask for you and the viewers at home. Uh, which way you think the turtle should be going? So I hope you're paying attention. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, tell us how it works, Paul. Yeah, so we've got, uh, we've got the turtle here and we've got a box here and the idea is to get the turtle literally precisely into the box. Um, there is a, a, what in programming terms is called a shell here. So over here we can, we can type in commands which will then be followed by the turtle. And just Commands, to clarify, we're the turtle yeah. on the screen, not the turtle on the table. The turtle on the table is going yeah, nowhere, so it's, it's a toy. It's this one. <laughs> I hope not. Yeah. Um, it's busy eating biscuits. So we've got, we've got only three commands at the moment, uh, so we can choose from. So there's forward, right and left. So forward and then a number in bracket. That means how many steps it goes forward. Part of the challenge is to figure out what that precisely means. So we're not telling you how far it will go with, with just one step. And then we've also got right and left. Uh, and the number there is actually uh, degrees. So if you go right 360 degrees, that means you're turning fully around. 180 would mean that you face the opposite direction. You can do that left and right. Um, left and right is from the point of view, the turtle's point of view. So you have to think 
from the turtle's point of view. Be in the turtle's shoes. Yeah. And so the, the challenge now is to, what we hope to do is to do this in as few commands as possible. Great, okay, everyone's voting. So let's see right. where we think the turtle should go. Okay, forwards is in the lead with 50%. So we're gonna go forwards. Kish, how many steps forwards do you think we should put the turtle? Uh, yeah, this is an interesting question because I think what we need to do is establish how big a step is, which of course we don't know at the moment. That's our Very X good factor. point. So not, not one I considered in the run through. I just uh, went in with a number. So uh, this is uh, this is me rather than the chat talking, but I'd, I would suggest taking one and watching very carefully so you evaluate what one step means, and then you can use that information to make better decisions for your future steps. Uh, one is an interesting choice, I would say. I mean, it might be it might help to look at the examples as well. So. One, one is a fairly small number, I would say. But, okay, uh, yeah. Just to give you a, no, yeah, a little okay. Yeah. Well. Higher, higher, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Are we saying higher than one then? Okay, well, yeah, okay, so maybe 10 then, something like that. Okay, okay. okay let's try 10. Yeah, the chat says 10 as well, so. Okay, great. So we've done 10. So we've done 10. Let's clear that widget down and you can vote again to let us know which way you think the turtle should go to get yeah. into the box. Okay. So that's uh, one step we've that, done so that's, far. One, that's one, one particular one, step, yeah. yeah. And so, so again, um, if you were doing that individually or with, with a number of people, you would probably want to, to think also, not just about figuring out how much a step is, but also how am I going to take this problem apart? So how, how do I get to the box? Um, you could go straight and then up, um, or maybe you first want to do something else with the turtle before you before okay. you move. Well, let's see what everyone thinks um, at home. Which way should the turtle go? 55% say forwards. Okay, Kish, what number? Um, suggestions from the chat are um, forward. Okay, there's a, there's a range of options here between 90 and 120. Kish, you're in charge. Uh, well, yeah, okay, let's, uh, so let's, let's split that and go for, um, Let's go for 110, which is rough. Interesting there. strategies. I'm enjoying actually listening to how this is being solved. Okay. Forward 110, great. Okay, so that's two steps we've done so far. Which way do you think the turtle should go now? Clear the widgets. I'm assuming you have to spell forward correctly, otherwise it doesn't work. That's right. So we could uh, say forwards, for instance. Let's say we just, so we don't change anything you say forwards oh yeah see, not happy it, it says something like name error name forwards it's not defined we haven't so broken it now have we we haven't we should no i hope not <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that could end the <laughs> show end quite it. abruptly yeah, yeah, yeah. right okay um, the widget yeah, says that, go left kit how many left should we go um yeah i think we're, i'm having a look at the suggestions i think we'll probably go left yeah left 45, 45. seems to be Consensus. Ooh. Perfect. Oh, that's, that's looking good. good. Three, good three work, steps. Yeah. Nice okay, excellent. Now let's clear that widget down Same. and see again where everyone thinks the turtle should go. And so, so we're doing very well. We've only done three steps so far, um, not counting my test step of forwards. Unsurprisingly, it is mm. forwards, which I, d I don't think <laughs> anyone <laughs> would just, no one's going to say any other way because it's getting lined up. Right, Kit, get, let's get an idea of how far forwards. Okay, so, uh, you know, based on the last movement, which was, you know, we've added up to 120, the suggestions I'm getting here are between, okay, so we're at 300, 320, 400. Uh, I think it's going to be towards the lower end. I'm looking at that, I think it's the lower end. So I, I would say 300, actually, mm. oh, in a soup. But I don't no, think we're not putting a, a turtle in a soup, <laughs> Dove, and that's valid, very no. cruel. Okay, Nor are we, we using a catapult, by the way, just for the record. Wait, oh, ah. is that in the box? What does in the oh. box mean? Uh, no, we've been quite, so, so we, we ran this at the Student Association uh, yeah. conference as well, and we were very strict about people having to put it exactly in the box. At oh, this really? point, there That's is... That's like the passport office with yeah. the signature. <laughs> 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 at this point, there is, there is an interesting choice here because there, there are now two, two ways forward. So um, how, how, do we get that, how do we get that turtle back? So, so maybe one clue, which... which given other people as well. Don't help them too much. Yeah. <laughs> Their problem. <laughs> so, on, so, so uh, well, uh, with, with just one command, we, we, we should be able to get it backwards. Okay. So we don't need to turn. 
But there's no backwards because there's, there's only no... forwards, right mm. or left. Thus presents the challenge. Why is there no backwards? Uh, because to some extent you can use numbers to go backwards. So if you if you give forward the right number, it's it's. Um, okay. Well, I think interpret this as. I think we've got some suggestions. I know there's some computing programming students here. So, Kit, ah. what does everyone say? Yeah, we've got a suggestion here uh, of minus thirty. <gasps> All right. Move forward minus thirty, which uh, I like the sound of that. Oh, oh. well oh. done, yes. bravo, excellent. Now, yeah. right, brilliant. Well, everyone's won that. So that's great. Yeah. And what is interesting then about this, Paul? Um, so, so in terms of uh, how, how we use this in TM112, it's really, um, so you wouldn't just be solving this on the fly. The idea would really be to start with a problem mm. and, and think about these bigger steps. So maybe if we, if we and, and in this case, I think we've, we've kind of done that because we've basically we de decomposed it into two sub-problems first. First is, well, find, figure actually out what a step exactly mm. is. Mm. And then the second is, okay, get the, the turtle in the box by first turning it in the right direction and then mm. going forward. That's a very sim simple example, but you can imagine if you have to draw a complicated, uh, fi uh, say, mathematical figure, or ge geometrical figure on the screen, or maybe you have some data and you want to draw a graph for that, you would have to use similar strategies uh, to, to achieve the same, same thing, basically. Mm. Brilliant. Excellent. Well, that was incredibly interesting and very wonderful watching the problem solving going on. Um, and again, uh, that's one of the interesting things with um, computing and communications. So, Paul, thank you very much. Well, stay with us because we're going to take a look at the um, Labcast rehearsal with Eleni and John Roswell and Kate Bradshaw are preparing for um, tonight's session. So we're going to go live over um, to the Labcast rehearsal and see what's going on there. Hello Karen, yes I'm live and I'm behind the scenes at one of our Raspberry Pi Labcasts. I'm joined by Kate and John and they're going to talk a little bit about what's going on here. But first do you want to introduce what you both do? Um, hi, I'm John Roswell. I'm uh, going to be running this particular Labcast uh, today. It's for TM129 which is an introductory computing and IT module and we're looking at little Raspberry Pi computers. Hi, I'm Kate Bradshaw. I'm the um, sort of producer, director sort of person uh, who runs um, a whole programme of Labcasts in STEM. Great, guys. So we've got a whole bunch of exciting looking kit here. John, do you want to go into a little bit about what's going to be going on this evening at the Labcast? OK, well, I'm going to be demonstrating uh, some of these little Raspberry Pi computers. These are very small little um, things, um, cheap as well, 10 or 11 pounds for a, a gadget like that. Um, but that can be used as a, uh, as a full computer, a desktop computer, so you can connect it up to a monitor, use it with a keyboard and mouse and do word processing or any web browsing, any of the sort of major uh, computing tasks that you do, including programming. But also these things are quite nice because they can be connected up to little bits of hardware. So I've got some hardware devices over there as well. One of them's just got some blinking lights on it just to show that there's something happening. Um, the one sitting next to it has got uh, some environmental sensors in, attached to it. Uh, so the challenge is how we can connect these together and uh, get information backwards and forwards. And I'm using my laptop, which has got Linux on there uh, as a way of doing that. And they're all connected through uh, Wi-Fi, um, through just a standard domestic router that's sitting over there. So uh, challenge for today is how to get all that set up uh, and demonstrated uh, to students uh, in a short period. Um, it's a sort of practical activity that you can easily imagine doing at home. So this is not really in a lab in any formal sense. It's kitchen table sort of stuff. Yeah, I was going to say, like you said, picking it up for, for £10 for the computer kit and the, everyone's got their router, so everyone could get involved by themselves at home. But the people tuning in um, tonight, they'll be able to uh, interact with the experiment whilst you're running it. Um, they'll be able to... Uh, uh, interact in various ways, seeing the widgets and so on, um, and tell me what I'm doing wrong, probably, uh, when I get the commands wrong, get myself in a muddle. Uh, so yes, there will be some interaction, uh, letting students help uh, decide. Um, and it will reinforce some of the uh, concepts we do in the course. Sure, yeah. So what, um, this uh, is not a compulsory element per se, but what are the real benefits for the students who are tuning in for this tonight? 
Um, for this one, they get to see some things that they might not normally experience, so they might not see this uh, sort of equipment themselves unless they think to go out and, and buy them themselves. Um, and uh, it is using bits of hardware that we won't do in the normal teaching of the module. So it's just a step outside of what's covered in the module. Um, some of the previous lab casts that we do in the course as a whole include a robotics one, and we have a big humanoid robot that we can show. That's the sort of thing that you're not going to do on a kitchen table at home, but it's, it's nice to be able to see it. Oh, fantastic. So these link to the different modules that you'll be, uh, that students will be taking throughout their course. That's right. So in this one module, there are three different uh, topics. So we're on the last bit at the moment, which is Linux. Uh, previously, we did uh, networking, and we did uh, some live uh, networking as well. And the one before that was robotics. And as I say, we used our big humanoid robot there. Brilliant. And Kate, you have a, a broad view of all the different lab casts that go on here at the Open University. Can you say a little bit more about the different types of things that the different lab casts offer? Uh, well, first say that it's, it's uh, only in STEM at the moment, um, but there's the range, uh, everything from broadcasting from a field uh, behind one of the, the buildings on campus. Um, that's an environment, uh, environmental science course, where students uh, have to um, learn how to do um, field science, how to um, choose parameters, um, choose equipment to collect the um, the data, and how to um, ask a scientific question, set up a hypothesis, um, and, and pursue the, the scientific sort of argument. Um, and the three academics who do it have great, great fun doing that. Uh, and we just hope we have nice weather whilst we're doing <laughs> <laughs> um, so that. So that, that's kind of one extreme in a way. Um, uh, one of the most obvious uh, uses of uh, lab casts is obviously, you know, um, bench chemistry sorts of experiments, and we do some of those as well. Um, for level two and level three. Uh, in fact, the level two one comes direct from a, an actual residential school we run here. And we get some um, ex-students in to, to run that for us and they do an experiment live. Um, that runs for three hours, that one. Oh, fantastic. Um, so that's the latest experiment. Um, but then we have some which are, say, for the phys physical sciences, uh, we have some experiments too. Obviously, not wet chemistry, they're sort of lasers and things like that. But there's more emphasis on how to work through the maths and the equations and things like that. And so it's using a whiteboard, for instance. Um, and there's a real benefit to students actually seeing uh, an expert work through the, the problem mathematically. Uh, so that sort of thing, too. Sure, so it helps give them confidence maybe to go on and do their own stuff in, in the future, exactly, really. Exactly. And because it's, uh, you know, they're interactive events, um, there, there's, a, there's a dialogue there. Students can talk to each other. Uh, which they, they certainly do, and they can ask questions of um, the, the presenters and the, um, we generally have somebody who's monitoring the chat too. Super, and can people catch up with these if they miss them? Oh, absolutely, yes, we always record them, so they're always there on the Open STEM Lab afterwards. Yep. Fantastic, super. Thank you both. It's really fascinating, and I hope it all goes well tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Karen, <laughs> back to you in the studio. Thank you so much, Eleni, and thank you very much, John and Kate. Good luck tonight. I'm sure that'll be absolutely amazing. And I know that students really enjoy that. Wasn't sort the raspberry pie I was expecting, but nonetheless, very, very interesting. So, Paul, what's next for you? We've, we've been hearing a lot of students um, today who've been doing a T112 in addition to, to other things. What's yep. next for you in terms of your academic um, aspirations? Um, well, in, ter in terms of aspirations, at the moment, I'm actually working on a, on a batch course myself. So um, this is a course on digital thinking tools. Um, oh, okay. So this is uh, a course which uh, is free uh, via the OpenLearn uh, site. It's hopefully going to go live later this year, beginning of next year. Um, and it has various, so it, it has a bit of Python in it as well, actually, because you can use the Python, so the, the, the shell, which we showed earlier on where we were driving the turtle, you can also use that as a, as, as a calculator to, to solve uh, sort of small, small problems. Um, we, we also look at things like, um, how can you, given that you have a text with a bit of argumentation in it, how can you analyze that? Use, again, digital tools to make that visually um, sort of explicit um, and use that uh, in, in writing a bit of, uh, say, a, a reason conclusion for, uh, say, TMA or an essay or something like that. Excellent. And we've got some resources on the Student Hub Live website that Paul has given us. So there's the OpenLearn Python Simple Coding. Um, there's also the T112 module description and the Zen of Python. 
That sounds exciting. Yeah, so this is, um, so the, the person who designed uh, Python, and I think it's now about 30 years ago, at some point a colleague of him asked him to write down in a few sort of pithy statements um, what the philosophy behind Python is. Um, and so this, this is that set of statements. Um, so there are about 10 of them which, uh, which sort of, uh, yeah, so capture what Python is about. And it's definitely recommend having a look at that. Excellent. Well, Paul, thank you so much for being on today. Um, and if you've enjoyed that, Paul made a video with us um, at a recent Student Hub Live event about Level 1. So you might want to check that out on the Student Hub Live YouTube channel. But before we end this session, I'd like to take a quick trip to the hot desk. Kit, how are things? Yeah, great. Um, the, the turtle exercise is incredibly popular. Um, I had a, a student mention that it reminded them of the uh, jumping frogs and toads from Java modules that they've been dealing with before. So that was a a nice callback there. Um, very, very happy with the result as well with the five moves. Um, discovering that we, uh, we're second out of uh, 20 examples where Paul's are on that. So uh, people in the chat feeling rightly very proud of themselves. Um, and just some other feedback here. It's been a great event. More like this needed, please. Um, someone else earlier was mentioning how much they've enjoyed uh, doing their MSc and computing with us and how they recommend it to anyone. So yeah, really positive stuff in the chat. It's been lovely. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Kit. Um, Lucia, welcome back to the studio. It's been quite a day. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. I've signed up for an engineering module uh, next, so I'm going to be doing that. And I've learned so many new things today. It has been a really, really fabulous showcase. And the students and, and audience at home have been sharing so many wonderful tips and ideas, and it's just been so positive. It's been fantastic. Lots of participation. Uh, really interesting and fun stuff this last session. Of Obviously, I'm a computer scientist. So we'll have to like this last <laughs> session. You know, it's a classic. You know, the turtle is it's just you know brings back memories. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How many steps did you do it in then? I, I would have probably done five, perhaps. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, I would have turned the turtle. Yeah. And then go straight. Um, so the, the turning would have been easier. I think the, the difficult bit is is to work out how far the you the, know, the turtle are. actually moves. So ten was obviously a very small amount. So then they have to figure out a particular. But I did participate I participate online, so I couldn't stop myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do it. I went on the chat. Yeah. Good. Now, um, you began the day and we were talking about some of the new curriculum and we've heard yes. colleagues talk about various new programmes, qualifications, modules, etc. that are all on the horizon. It's a really exciting time for the faculty at the it moment. Is. Absolutely. It is. It is for STEM. It is in the wider context of the UK. There's so much demand for STEM skills, so much shortage. Um, I mean, if you think about, you know, about 89% of the industry employs 10 people are struggling to find the right people. So it's never been such a great time to join STEM. And with all the opportunities that we provide our students, there's a choice for everybody. Um, and even if you just want to do part of STEM, you can still integrate with other di disciplines, which is fantastic. So you have this interdisciplinarity that you can, you can explore. Yes, I mean, one of the key things we've been talking about today is everyone's been coming on saying, well, this is from our school, but actually we link so much into other things. So let's take a quick recap of some of the things that we've, we've learned about today. We heard from the School of Physical Sciences and we looked at their various telescopes and we had some demonstrations here from Andrew yes. Norton and Meredith Morrell, um, which was really exciting. And they were explaining how we've got these telescopes and we can actually allow students to be able to go in and operate those. And what a fantastic yes. experience that is. It's amazing. Uh, telescope the other side of, of the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> we can see it operated from home. It's, uh, it's pretty uh, impressive. And a lot of students were very interested in the planetary sciences. And we were talking a lot about informal learning and some of the MOOCs available from the Open University, which yes. are incredibly popular. Incredibly popular, uh, yes. And also, you know, for people who are, um, want to take uh, a proper degree, then, you know, they can continue to study a master's level where we have a space science and technology master's as well. So, you know, there are opportunities there beyond the the informal learning. Absolutely. And we had a, a science lab tour. Um, so we had a little look at um, some of the cold atoms labs and uh, uh, saw some of the exciting things going on there. Um, then we looked at some of the field trip highlights from um, Triple E's Environment, Earth yes. and Ecosystem Science. Um, and we looked at the tweeting tree and oh, treewatch.net yes. and talked about the importance of citizen science and how people could actually be able to get data and collect data themselves. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, the, with the internet, you know, the possibility are you know infinite if, if you want, and uh, and it's great to see you know the general public participating and being really enthusiastic about about doing science and. and 
And so that, that's a fantastic example of how you can combine technology and people to, to solve really interesting problems. Yeah, and Phil was telling us about um, one of the field trips he's doing as well on the weekend, and that sounds really, really exciting. So we were encouraging students, in particular when they've got a level two or three um, module that, that is perhaps very specific to what they want to do, to register now so that they can ensure a place on that module. Absolutely, yes. Registration are open, you know, it's time to, you know, Put your name down. Yes. Then we had the incredibly inspiring um, engineering and innovation session. Um, and we looked at women in engineering. And we also saw the results of some amazing work that students have done for design um, poster competition, which is on at the Open University. So everyone is welcome to come and see that yeah. this week. I, I must say, on design, we've just refreshed that particular curriculum. Mm. So our design qualification now offer many more choices starting from October. So please you know, have a look what you can do now with design. And then Chris Heath came and talked to us about um, some of the work he's doing in one of our Meet Our Researchers session. We were looking at um, touchscreen computing changing mental health um, and how attention could be measured. Um, that was really, really exciting. And then we took a look at some of the open STEM labs and Nick Braithwaite came and showed us um, some of the ways that students can operate various um, things that are happening either here or even slides looking at various objects. Absolutely. Very important practical skills. You can still do virtually, but still they're practical skills. They're very important for whoever is engaged in applied science. Yeah, and he brought all his awards as well. And he told us about Amazing. the work he's been doing with government, you know, in terms of promoting the way that the Open University are teaching students and Absolutely. how valued that is. It is extremely valuable and it's a very rich resource, which is, you know, for our students and beyond. So we should make most of, you know, most of it. Then we looked at student support and we took yeah. a quick trip up to Manchester to see what was happening yeah. in the office up there. Um, and we also talked about the importance of careers advice and the way that, that the Open University offers a very holistic package to students throughout their studies. Absolutely. I mean, we cater for everybody at any point in their career, whether they have a study break, they want to get back into employment, whether they're professional, they want to get up the ladder. Anybody, you know, can find something really valuable for their future. Then we had a maths and statistics session. Um, so we were looking at uh, chaos theory and the four colour theorem, which was really, really interesting. And the whole way that maths and stats are using modelling to predict the future. Absolutely. I mean, it's so important these days where, you know, data are everywhere and people really use artificial intelligence and statistical modeling to try to predict in economics, in sciences, in everywhere, really. So fundamental skills, I think, you know, in the near future, more and more people will have to acquire the skills to be able to make good decisions. But they weren't interested in the weather that lot. That's probably for another, <laughs> another school who pays more attention to things that aren't quite so predictable, as I think they called it. <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> then we looked um, at uh, life, health and uh, chemical sciences. Uh, we had a chromatography demonstration. Yeah, and yeah. we also looked at an amazing augmented reality app and the way that we're teaching students to, to look at the heart. Absolutely. That was uh, incredible, wasn't it? My, my, my son studied medicine, so it's the sort of technology that really, really do the preclinical uh, training for how practitioners is an amazing um, And in addition resource. to being able to use telescopes and use some of those apps, etc., it really did demonstrate how, you know, distance education was so superior in that sort of sense of really enhancing the use of technology to be able to teach students in Absolutely. a way that just isn't possible without that technology. Absolutely. I mean, technology is, is quite fundamental now, um, even in traditional university, but so much more for the Open University. So we can give this facility to all our students. And, and, and our non-students through some of the informal learning. Absolutely. Except. Absolutely. <laughs> and, um, and then we uh, talked about waste management. Yeah. Tony Gladding and Carl came on um, and talked about the various research that they're doing and we, we discussed composting and what we could all do as citizens um, to do our bit for the environment. We then uh, met some students and talked about support for students and the various ways that students can engage in societies and also how important the student voice is. Yes, absolutely. And um, we listen to our students. We want to hear more from our students. In fact, uh, we're trying to introduce technology that allows students to participate more in our curriculum and shape our curriculum. So, you know, it'd be good to see to have all that participation it's extremely valuable to us. It is. And uh, then we had uh, from Computing and Communications where we had our, our Python Turtle Challenge and, and our Raspberry Pi demonstration in uh, 
a foregrounding of tonight's lab cast. So that was very, very interesting. Yes, absolutely. As I said, I'm a computer scientist by training, so that's just my home. <laughs> so if I ask you what your favourite bit was, <laughs> are you going to be biased uh, or not? <laughs> it's difficult. Too many good things, actually. Uh, I guess the, the things that always impresses me is, is the practical, the more practical aspects of, of um, what we offer and, you know, the digital facilities, how we use technology, the innovation, and really the enthusiasm of the people that are involved in this sort of uh, teaching, you know, for us as researchers, academic, but for our students, it's just the, the passion, I think, is yeah. was very clear throughout the day. Absolutely. I mean, I know about the awards, I know about the labs, but when you meet people and you see the enthusiasm for the subject yeah, and the, the genuine way that they're so concerned about how they teach. Yes, it's a true passion at UU. It's, it's fundamental to what we do. Mm. Um, everybody gets involved with teaching pretty much, and, and we are very proud of it, I think. Yeah, no, it's been fantastic. And I tell you what, everyone at home has been absolutely fantastic as well, haven't they, Kit? They absolutely have, yeah. Um, lots of celebrations here at the Turtle Challenge. The uh, uh, Having finished uh, second out of 20 is, is definitely the big news, I'm afraid. Getting it done in five. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Comments include, uh, the hair never stood a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, lots, of, lots of pride for team home there, which, uh, which uh, I'm really happy with. Yeah, good stuff. Excellent. Well, Kip and uh, so many of your other colleagues who have been on our hot desk today, thank you so much. Um, and thank you everyone at home for sharing links, sharing your ideas, inspiration and talking together. I'm so glad that you've had a good day. If you would like to tell us about your experience, please drop us an email, studenthub at open.ac.uk. Or there's a feedback form on the Student Hub Live website if you'd like to tell us about your experience. Whilst this session has ended today, or is ending, um, there are many more opportunities to connect with Student Hub Live events. We've got a writing retreat over the summer. We'll be looking at report writing, which I know will be of particular interest to many STEM students. And also next week, we're looking at writing for visual purposes. So those of you who are interested in design might like to join us. There are workshops in Adobe Connect. So please do come along. Everyone is welcome. You can just log in and find out more about those from the Student Hub Live website. Don't forget, though, that the um, Facebook page from the faculty is a great source of inspiration and a really, really good way of keeping in touch. So um, like the Open University STEM page and also the Twitter account is at OU underscore STEM. So I hope that you can use those ways to connect over the summer as you start preparing for your modules um, in September. We'll be doing more Student Hub Live sessions in preparation for that particular module start. So please do check out the website, studenthublive.open.ac.uk, where you can find out more about what we've got planned for you then. But from everybody who's been involved in this event, from all of the guests, from everybody at home, everyone on the hot desk, and most importantly, our production crew, etc., who've made this day possible, thank you so much for coming along. That's all from us today. We will see you at another event very soon. <laughs>